From his base in Stockholm, Sweden, analyst and author Joan Norberg travels in the footsteps of Nobel laureate Milton Friedman to examine the relevance of Friedman's ideas in today's world. Milton Friedman traveled the world to examine various economic systems. He concluded that for most people, an emphasis on economic freedom would lead to both individual and political freedom. Many commentators say that Milton Friedman did more for freedom than anybody else in recent decades. He convinced many nations to embrace economic freedom. When Milton Friedman died in 2006, The Economist magazine's obituary had the headline, How Milton Freed Man. On the other hand, writers like the Canadian anti-capitalist Naomi Klein claim that he helped authoritarians by advising them to adopt free market economic policies. So who's right? Friedman would advise us to test his ideas by examining the evidence of recent history. If you want to see how the free market really works, this is the place to come. Hong Kong, a place with hardly any natural resources. About the only one you can name is a great harbor. Yet the absence of natural resources hasn't prevented rapid economic development. On a back street, Norberg encounters the very same craftsman Friedman visited in 1980 to find that Friedman's prediction has indeed come true. And Mr. Jung is still here. And nowadays he produces more things for the tourist trade. Thank you, Mr. Jung. And in Washington, D.C., Norberg finds that Friedman's words from 1980 still resonate today. There's hardly an issue in which you won't find government on both sides. For example, in one of these massive buildings scattered all through this town, filled to the bursting with government employees, some of them are sitting around trying to figure out how to spend our money to discourage us from smoking cigarettes. In another of the massive buildings, maybe far away from the first, some other employees, equally dedicated, equally hardworking, are sitting around figuring out how to spend our money to subsidize farmers to grow more tobacco. Well, it's obvious that things haven't changed much. U.S. politicians still spend tax dollars on anti-smoking campaigns, and tobacco farming is still subsidized by the government. Every government intervention results in unintended consequences. These consequences have to be dealt with as well, and that leads to new unintended consequences. The result is a constant growth of government. In 1980, Friedman designed a very graphic way to highlight this problem. The federal regulations that govern our lives are available in many places. One set is here, in the Library of Congress, in Washington, D.C. In 1936, the federal government established the Federal Register to record all of the regulations, hearings, and other matters connected with the agencies in Washington. This is volume one, number one. In 1936, it took three volumes like this to record all these matters. In 1937, it took four, and then it grew and grew and grew. At first, rather slowly and gradually, but even so, year by year, it took a bigger and bigger pile to hold all the regulations and hearings for that year. Then around 1970 came a veritable explosion, so that one pile is no longer enough to hold the regulation for that year. It takes two and then three piles. Until on one day in 1977, September 28th, the Federal Register had no fewer than 1,754 pages. And these aren't exactly what you would call small pages either. No matter where you come from, whenever there's a problem, it's tempting to look to the government for solutions. Since the recession of 2008, we've seen unprecedented government intervention in the financial sector and in the automotive industry. We've seen new spending programs, more tariffs and new regulations. And we've seen the largest buildup of government debt in American history, a debt that might haunt us for generations. Free or Equal, a personal view with Joe and Norberg, can be seen on public television stations nationwide. Consult local listings for times and channels.